Hi everyone, thank you for coming to my talk. So my name is Jerome Marchand, I'm a kernel engineer at Red Hat here in Brno. And uh, today I'm gonna talk to you about uh, BPF trace. So what is BPF trace? So BPF trace is a dynamic tracing language. I assume that you all know what tracing and language mean. But maybe some of you are not uh, familiar with the term uh, dynamic tracing. So that basically means it's uh, tracing that you can uh, enable or disable on the fly. You don't need to uh, modify uh, your application to do it. Um, let's see what's a bit under the hood. So BP, uh, BPF Trace is based on uh, eBPF, the Enhanced Berkeley Packet Filter. That's been a pretty hot topic uh, in kernel area lately. And uh, well, we don't need to, to get into uh, the detail of what it is now, but ju just, just you can know that it's a small virtual machine that can uh, run some uh, user code in kernel. And uh, because of uh, safety and security concern, uh, there's a bit, uh, it has some, some limitation, you know, such as, you know, size of limitation, and notably you cannot do loop in there because you want uh, to only run a program that, uh, you know, terminates. And uh, besides that, uh, BPF Trace also reuse uh, existing tracing capabilities that exist in the Linux kernel is that already used by other tools. So for instance, uh, K-probes, U-probe, TracePoint. So I guess if you already used a tool like Perf or Trace before, you're probably already familiar with that. And if you don't, uh, don't worry, we'll talk a little bit about that later. So why would you uh, choose to use BPF Trace? Well, first, it's because you have some tracing needs, so maybe you get an application that is not behaving correctly, or maybe there's some performance issue. But, okay, there's plenty of tracing uh, tools out there, so why, why would BPF trace maybe uh, could be uh, something that's suitable to your need? What, what, what kind of characteristic is, does it have that may be something that you need? So. Uh, highlighted a few points. First, it's dynamic, so unlike, say, uh, adding printf to, to your program or GDB, you don't have to do anything to, to trace it. It's, uh, it's already there, and you can also use it, for instance, on a third-party application that you don't even have the code of. Uh, then, yes, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a scripted language, so unlike, say, uh, pair for ftrace, uh, you can easily script it, you, you, you may, you may, it's more flexible, you can tailor it to your needs. Um, it's safe, that's uh, mostly uh, in comparison to system tap, because like system tap, you also run stuff in kernel, but you, you have strong limitation to, to what you, you can run, and normally it shouldn't, it shouldn't crash your kernel. And uh, last, it's, uh, it's pretty simple and concise language. Uh, so, for instance, you know, anything you can do in BPF Trace, you could also do uh, with BCC, for instance, but, uh, well, as a matter of fact, uh, BPF Trace is based on BCC. But, you know, if you've ever seen a BCC program, it's long, it's complicated, it mixes up different stuff. And BPF Trace is much, much easier to use, much more user-friendly. So, let's see first uh, a little example. So, that's going to be uh, the, the classic uh, Hello World. So it's pretty simple, but you can already see uh, a couple of features of, uh, of the language. First, you have the begin and end uh, statement. So, you know, that's, uh, that's uh, prefix uh, some, uh, uh, some block of code that's going to run, as you probably uh, guessed, uh, at the beginning and the end of your tracing session. And it's also you can see that uh, BPF trace offer uh, classic uh, C style uh, printf function. Um, yeah, one, one more thing to notice, this is one way to, uh, you can invoke uh, BPF trace in the command line with uh, the command directly uh, after the minus E option. There's also another way to do it if you, you, know, you have a bigger script, you can just uh, write it uh, in a file and then just uh, run it with an argument to BPF trace, so that's an example here. 
And uh, if you want to, you could also use a shebang at the top and mark your file executable. So this is uh, an example I choose because I wanted to choose an easy, an easy example of, uh, of a probe. So as you can see, the first line, that's going to be the name of, of the probe. And uh, it's a trace point of a syscall, and precisely the syscall is uh, the read syscall. And even more precisely, we're going to trace uh, when the syscall exits. And uh, after that, you get uh, the action block, so which is uh, instructions that are going to be uh, executed uh, each, uh, each time the probe fires. So as it, in this case, each time uh, the red syscall exits. And that's a pretty simple example. Again, you, 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 you print something. And uh, well, what we print here is two things. First is a common name. So com is a built-in variable into BPF trace that contains uh, the, the common name. And uh, next, it's uh, the return value of uh, the syscall, which is the uh, size of the read. So if you look at the output, then you, 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 you can see we just, you know, print something every time uh, we, we read something. So, okay, that's pretty big. There, there, there's a there's possibility, you know, to, to have a more synthetic output. We, we're going to see that later. But uh, first, we're going to talk about uh, the kind of probe you can use uh, with uh, BPF trace. So first, you are K probe, caret probe. So this is a probe which are set at the entrance and exit of uh, kernel functions. And uh, there you can also access uh, the argument of the function or the return value of the function, specifically on caret probe. Uh, so then you, you got U probe, U red probe, that's very much the same thing, but for user space. Also there's trace point, so trace point, uh, there's a number of uh, static uh, trace points that has been inserted in strategic place in the kernel. And well, they also typically have uh, arguments and written values and uh, then you can read. And well, there are a few other type of probes, some profiles that allow to do a time-based sampling. And uh, I think I'm gonna skip on the other one because we don't have too much time and it's not that important, but just, just so you know, there's other kind of probes that exist. And uh, also, yeah, something that's pretty useful, you can list your probes, because there's really plenty of them. And you can search uh, you know, by, by the probe name, and you can also use a, a wildcard. So yeah, now, now we're going to have a look at how, uh, how variables work uh, in, uh, in BPF trace. So there are local variables and uh, global variables. And uh, for global variables, you, you have two types of them. You got scholar variables, and uh, which is very much used uh, associative arrays in uh, BPF trace. We also uh, call them map. So this array that associate uh, with uh, some value with the uh, keys. And uh, well, to 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 be uh, to be honest, actually, uh, scholars uh, over there are implemented. They are actually also. Uh, there's also associative array, but just uh, we happen to just uh, access them by the zero key and uh, not otherwise. But you know, for, for practical purposes, I guess we can just consider that they are Scala. So now we have an example here. In this example, we have uh, just uh, one variable, read count. It's a Scala. And, uh, what uh, we would put in there, it's uh, the result of the count uh, function. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a built-in function uh, in a BPF trace. And uh, it uh, just uh, returns the number of time uh, it has been called. So here at the end, you're going to have in read count the, the value the syscall uh, read has been, uh, has been called. And, uh, when you look at the output, you, you can see it actually prints that, uh, that variable. I, I didn't do anything. Uh, BPFS just always uh, prints all the, the global variables at the end, so 
you don't have to, to worry about that. So now it's, uh, it's the same example, just uh, uh, I put a key just after the variable. So I use as a key the, the common name. So now we have an example with an associative array. And uh, so you, you, you can look at the output now. Now it's, uh, it's sorted by, by key. So in this case, uh, the, the common name. So there, there are a few uh, buildings variable in, in BPF trace. We already see uh, the process name come. Um, there are a few, few other ones, uh, very much used. Uh, usually the, they have a self-explanatory name. So PID, TID, we use that all the time. Com, as we already seen. Uh, CPU too. We, we often use that as a, as, a, as a key for an associative array, you know, to, to, to sort it by CPU, TID, whatever we, we need to do. Uh, a few other variables um, usually used in a different way, but very useful. So, yeah, the nanosecond timestamp, we, we can use that all the time. Uh, argument, obviously, uh, return value, we use that a lot. And there are a few more, probably. Don't need to, to get uh, into detail here. And uh, beside the uh, built-in variables, uh, BPF trace also provides uh, uh, a few uh, very useful uh, functions. So here is uh, uh, an example of one of them. And uh, that's an uh, ist function that's, uh, that returns uh, an histogram of, uh, a logarithmic histogram of all the values that has been passed to it. And uh, to be clear here, uh, I mean all the values that have been passed to it in all the code you do uh, during the, the tracing session, because obviously it gets only uh, one argument. So in this example, so we, we, we got uh, at the end uh, a wide, uh, system-wide uh, histogram of uh, all the, uh, the, the read sizes. As you can see, uh, it doesn't take much code, and you already have uh, some some nice uh, analysis, uh, just a couple of lines of code. So there's a few uh, other uh, functions like that that BPF trace provided. We already seen a count and ist. So there's also uh, some. So that uh, adds up all the values that it has received in arguments. AVG does the same, but calculates the average. Mean, max, uh, for that. Uh, we collect uh, that uh, remember the minimum value, the maximum value, uh, stats, which may be also useful, which is basically uh, count sum and AVG together. There is uh, also a, a linear histogram. If we prefer to have a linear, sometimes it's, it's more useful. And uh, yeah, there are a few uh, more uh, ancillary uh, functions, you know, that. Uh, delete, clear, zero the maps, print it. And of course, you know, we can combine together uh, the feature we have seen before. So if we take the, the previous example, and now uh, we can also uh, just uh, differentiate the output uh, depending on the common name. So now we have an histogram for, for, for each program that's running. And uh, Okay, again, that the output's gonna be pretty long. It's uh, yet to cut it short. But imagine you, you're only interested in one program, say GCC, where you can filter on it. So you could, of course, uh, put uh, an if statement into your action block, but there's actually a better way to do that. So we, we got filters, they're also known as predicates. So, you know, you, you just add the filter after the, the probe name, and uh, you're good to go. So the, the probe is still going to be active, but uh, the, the action block is not going to run if the predicate is false. So yeah, in that example, uh, now we, we, we filter on GCC, and uh, we only collect data that uh, GCC have done, uh, or the reads that GCC have done. So yeah, that's also something uh, we, that's pretty useful. We do a lot uh, with uh, BPF traces, measuring time, measuring delays, stuff like that. So if 
For the example, let's see uh, you want to, to see uh, how much time uh, the reads take uh, in GCC. So what we're going to do here is uh, we, we take a snapshot of, uh, of a timestamp. Uh, we put it uh, in a per TID uh, variable. And uh, yeah, you do that on the syscall enter. Yeah. And uh, when it exits, uh, you, uh, you just uh, make the difference between the current time and, uh, and the, the one, the snapshot you, you made earlier. And voila, that's it. Uh, well, there's a few uh, interesting stuff. You can clean, delete stuff, but basically that's it. Just a few lines, and uh, you can have uh, an histogram of, uh, of the time it takes for read to, to, to process. So yeah, structure member, yeah. Uh, Sometimes you need to go a bit deeper and uh, look uh, what's into the argument on a function, and often you know, this, this function uh, uh, a C structure, so you need to navigate them, and PPF trace allow you to do that. So in this case, you can see first line. Uh, I had to include a, a, an error. Uh, if uh, you have a kernel, kernel with BTF uh, support enabled, actually you can even skip that uh, that step. And uh, so yeah, what, what we're gonna do here? We're gonna look into a VFS read function. We have a product of that function. And uh, we want to, to look, say, at uh, what the access right you got on this, function, on this file that you open. So you're going to look in the first argument of that function, that arg0. It happened to be a strict file. And uh, well, there's going to be an indirection with the member that you, you need to see. Here it's f mode. And well, it's a, it, in that example, there is only one level of indirection, but there could be uh, several of them. You know, you uh, a structure that points to another structure, that points to another structure. That finally points to uh, uh, to the members that you're interested in. And uh, yeah, well, yeah, well, you can see that uh, GCC seems pretty consistent. It only uh, reads files that it has opened uh, without. Uh, uh, right, right. No, nothing really important here, just to, to give an example. Uh, there are a few other functions that uh, are uh, available in uh, BPF Trace. So we already seen printf. Uh, what's going to be important here? I'm not going to say that. There's a few functions, you know, to uh, resolve either the, an address or uh, with a symbol or to do the opposite, resolve a symbol with an address. Uh, stuff like also, you know, execute shell commands, stuff like that. There's some Roman countries register. Oh, yeah, stack, stack, that might be useful, you know, just get the call stack for, for where the probe has been fired. Stuff like that. And, uh, well, because you know that presentation was pretty short, I guess uh, to, to to really see uh, what's or everything possible in BFF Trace. So uh, I just wanted to point you to uh, for the people who are interested to to know a bit more about it. To like two 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 things, two 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 resources that I found useful. So the first one is a BPF Trace a one liner tutorial. So it's it's a tutorial. It's pretty short. It as just uh, a few one-liners, one after another, and uh, you know, it's end on experience on BPF Trace. And if you, 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 you want to go further than the BPF Trace uh, reference guide, it's actually uh, not that long. It's pretty short for a reference guide, and yeah. for everything you're not gonna have in the tutorial, that's gonna be it. So, do you have any questions? Any questions for Jérôme? No? No questions. Oh, I must have uh, explained everything. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Do you need the, um, uh, the debug info, the kernel debug info for that to work? Uh, no, no, I don't remember exactly. Uh, 
No, not the debug info, I think. You, you need uh, devil and headers. OK, thank you. Any more questions? We still have time. I realize I'm going to sound stupid, but it took me a long time to understand that when you ran those scripts, um, I, was ask, I was asking myself, what are you tracing? But it, I, f I finally understood that when you run a BPF trace, tra BPF trace script, you are tracing everything. Um, for future incantations of, the, uh, of this talk, you might want to make that clearer to the beginning for new, uh, at the beginning for newbies like me. Thank you. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. A uh, related question, maybe, why does uh, the printf output go? Because it's printed from inside the kernel, eh? so it goes to the controlling terminal of the BPF trace process. Uh, why Sorry? does it go? <laughs> the, uh, the message is printed by the printf uh, function. Yeah. Where do they go? They do to the controlling terminal? Or where do, where? Uh, on the terminal you're on. Uh, yeah. The messages are printed from inside the kernel, no? No, 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 no. No, okay. no, no the, the, all the printf you use, it's, it's not in the kernel, whatever. It's on the terminal. It's a, it's a common light function. You know, you I think I can uh, help on the, this question. Uh, the printf, BPF print K, or whatever it's called, go to um, ring buffer that is in uh, uh, debugfs, I think. And then uh, BPF trace can read from that. And print it on the terminal. <laughs> uh, what kind of version do you need to have uh, any of these features available? Sorry, what kind of? What kind of version? What is the minimum kind of version you need to, to try to use BTF Trace? Uh, kernel version? Oh, I don't remember. It's for something. Sorry? I think I heard 4.8. Right. So the answer is 4.8. <laughs> Any more questions? Continuing from the first question about the, it tra tracing everybody, uh, sorry, everything in the system, is it possible to attach it to a specific uh, container or a C group or something and restrict it to that? Uh, well, I, you can trace anything that's on your, ker on your kernel for, for at least for, for the K probe and whatnot, but uh, I don't know anything about containers. I know, I know there's some function about C groups, so but I don't know what container we really. have. Um, you had that example where you were filtering for the, the command name, yeah. right? So that said slash com equals gcc. Yeah. I just tried that, and for some reason, I can't use this com variable in really? the function anymore then. Is that uh, on purpose? <laughs> Do you know? Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 one of the basic buildings variables. Uh, I'm not sure what what version do you have? Or? Uh, five dot four. Uh, what five dot four? Uh, BPF trace five dot four. Um. So yeah, it's it's pretty old, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> BPF trace minus minus version tells me BPF trace. <laughs> oh, <laughs> maybe it's old. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. Normally it should work. Uh, I, I, I did all the example, you know, I just, uh, so. It's, it's relatively recent, so sometimes stuff don't work. Or it breaks. Okay, I'm sorry. We're all out of time. Thank you for your questions. Thank you, Jerome. Okay.